shortcut, a shortcut to enlightenment? The answer is yes. The answer is to discover how to love yourself. For this reason, I've invented a process, and today I'm going to share that process with you. Some of you may have heard it. For those of you, this will be brand new. Self-love is the root from which everything grows. Every spiritual practice is dedicated towards one thing, and that is loving yourself. If you understand that the ultimate truth of this universe is oneness, then you can't practice loving anything without simultaneously loving yourself. But the best way to go about learning how to love everything that is, learning unconditional love, is to learn how to unconditionally love yourself. For most people on this planet, to say, I love myself, is not truth, yet. When you say that, you will feel an emotional withdrawal from those words, because it is not your truth. And so, we invented this process, myself and my guides, to help people to line up with self-love quickly. This process begins with a commitment. The commitment is, for one year, you are going to live your life according to one question. It will be your mantra every moment of every single day. So you get out a calendar and you mark today and then you mark 365 days from today and all the days in between you live your life according to the question what would someone who loved themselves do? Right now in the current life that you're living you're struggling with your decisions. You're not entirely happy. The reason is you are making your decisions based on criteria other than what you would do if you truly loved yourself. Asking yourself what would somebody who loved themselves do, receiving the answer and then doing it, is how you're going to get everything that you want in this life. I've spoken quite often about the fact that you could think of life kind of like a current. Upstream is an aspect of resistance downstream is an aspect of allowing and everything you want is downstream. The answer to what would someone who loved themselves do is always downstream. And so, if you're constantly going downstream, you can do no other than to line up with your personal joy, the perfect partner if that's what you want, all the career success and purpose you could possibly hope for. You are going to ask yourself, what would someone who loved themselves do any time you have to make a decision, no matter how small or large. You're going to ask yourself this question whenever you have a spare minute where you have the opportunity to decide what to do with your time. Basically, all day, every day, for an entire year, you are going to live your life according to this one simple question. When you ask this question, the answer will come to you immediately. It will come as an immediate flash of intuition. I want to talk to you for a minute about intuition. Intuition is defined as immediate insight or understanding without conscious reasoning. Many of us have learned to tune out or to ignore our own intuition. Most of us have received negative messages from our parents, teachers, or peers which caused us to doubt our own intuition. By this point in your life, your intuition has most likely been obscured by the fears and beliefs that you have erected in front of it. But the good news is, Though we may shut out the messages we receive from our true self, the true self continues to give them, so it is impossible to lose intuition. Intuition comes with a feeling of correctness and affirmation. It will come as a sudden knowing, a gut feeling, a thought, an image, an emotion, or a bodily sensation. It will be a quiet, clear, and often quick impression. Even if the message of intuition is about something negative, it will come across as being delivered in a neutral tone. 
This is because genuine intuitive guidance comes from the highest of perspectives, a place of love and freedom where fear does not exist. So if strong negative emotion is involved with an intuition, you should always be suspicious that you are either dealing solely with fear or that you have clouded an intuition with fear. Don't be worried that you're not going to know the answer to the question. When you're facing a decision and you ask yourself, what would someone who loved themselves do? You will get the answer immediately. It will be a quick flash of intuition. So this process, less than getting that intuition, is more about having the balls to act on that intuition. When you ask yourself, what would someone who loved themselves do? The answer you receive is coming directly from your higher self. And your higher self holds unlimited perspective. So let's say that you have decided, you have told the universe subconsciously that your idea of happiness is to meet this kind of perfect person. But let's say that that kind of perfect person is on the other side of the world. To you in your physical life, it's very difficult to conceive of how you could go about meeting this person who is good for you but is currently on the other side of the world. But from infinite perspective, from source perspective, it's no more difficult than it is for you to take an ant from one room to the next room. And so when you ask yourself the question, what would someone who loved themselves do, you're actually allowing the universe to take you along the quickest route between where you are and what you have asked for. You may not know why that's the answer. When you ask what would someone who loved themselves do and you receive the answer, you won't know why that's the answer. But you must understand that the universe knows much more than you do from your limited perspective about what is in line with your highest good. So, for example, let's say you're in the grocery store and you ask yourself, apple or orange, what would someone who loved themselves do? And the answer is apple. Okay. Now you're just going to act on it. You're going to eat the apple. Right now you don't know why that's the answer. But your infinite, eternal self understands all the biochemical balance that is taking place within your body. And it understands that what's in line with your highest good and your joy is whatever is making up the apple versus the orange. So like I said before, the action part of this process is the one that takes some courage. This is how it's going to go. You're going to heed your intuition and go in the direction of whatever is in line with self-love. For example, let's say you're at home and you have a million things you could be doing, but you can't decide what the priority is. You're going to ask yourself, what would someone who loved themselves do? And if the answer is go take a bath, you're going to go take a bath. If the answer is clean the house, you're going to clean the house. You will know if the action you were told to take is correct and in line with intuition instead of rationalization based on how you feel. Even if you are afraid to act on the intuition, the idea of the action and subsequent taking of that action will emotionally feel like relief. Relief feels good, so taking the action will feel good if you have listened to your intuition and made a decision based on self-love. I want to stress to you that you are going to ask this question relative to every single moment of your life especially decisions, no matter how mundane, no matter how important. The point of this process, of course, is to create this kind of a habit so that at the end of 365 days, you literally can't live your life any other way. Now this process, I understand, 365 days of self-love, sounds kind of trite sounds like one of those ridiculous self-help exercises that people give you, these self-help experts give you, and they never really go anywhere even though they kind of feel good at the time. But those of you who have been watching my videos should know me much better than that. What I love the most about this process is it may sound like a small thing, but it is one of the most difficult processes you can possibly do. The reason is when you begin to go in the direction of self-love, every single thing that is in the way of your enlightenment, every single thing that is in the way of love in general in your life will come to the surface. You will be facing more of your demons than you can possibly imagine as a result of applying this process to your life. But, 
if you continue to ask yourself what would someone who loved themselves do, instead of running up against those demons, you will flow around them. This process is the quickest, the quickest route to get you to enlightenment, the quickest route to get you to self-love. So go try it out and have a good week.